Welcome back to Money in the Bank with Craig at the North American Blockchain Summit 2023. Uh, today we're doing a full live stream of the event and we have a, uh, a guest for my Money in the Bank with Frank segment here. It's good to see you again, my friend. Good to see awesome you again. To see you too, <laughs> hey, finally see me in a jacket. So let's uh, roll the disclaimer and head on in. So it's good to have you back. I got a brief opportunity to talk to you last week, and and now here we are. After, you know, post our you know post post production of of my last uh, fun thing. I, I understand you guys at, at Bank Social. You guys just came out with some new news today. Some yeah, some some awesome news. The the Federal Credit Union, the proposed Defy Federal Credit Union, we launched today officially. That is awesome. What does that mean for the general investing public? Which is yeah. So you know the the thing here is that Web3 is in a choke point right now. Crypto, Web3, it's in a choke point right now. And so two years ago, I was at this actual event in Austin and inspired by all the talks and driven by the lack of access. I said, you know what? There's got to be a way. There's got to be a better way to go about this. So crypto has this nonprofit kind of for the people mentality. Well, credit unions have this same for, right. for the people nonprofit mentality. And so we ended up marrying the two. Uh, it's been a, a, about a year and a half long endeavor. Uh, and what it, means for the, what it means for the public, generally the Web3 community, is the ability for financial services to now be something that you aren't squeezed out of. Um, and, you know, Frank, as far as, you know, financial, uh, what, it, what it means for the investing public, you know, having the ability to on-ramp, off-ramp, into, in and out of digital assets, it's something that, I mean, I'm sure we've all experienced it. It's, it's difficult to do. How many times has your bank shut off a credit card or, or yeah. made it hard for you to do, right? So we're connected in with, uh, you know, our app and our, our ecosystem, our platform is, is an open banking platform. So at its core, it's about allowing you to have self-custody of your, your digital assets paired right next to your fiat assets, getting in and out of these new ecosystems, these new financial tools in your hands, right? And getting kind of the, the banks to step out of the way, we're connected into all the, the real-time payments networks, both here and abroad, not all abroad, but all here and, and some of the abroad ones. And it's this financial inclusion. We want everybody, you, you should be able to interact with whoever you want. You should be able to invest in whatever you want, right? Um, there are mechanisms, it's regulated now. We know that the United States is still on the cusp of you know, opening this world up. And we feel like we've, we've brought forward a model yeah. that others can follow in the footsteps of to now uh, create these financial cooperatives that are for the people. Two tiered questions. So first and foremost, how does an uh, individual investor, I, is, I suspect that you said there's five different credit unions. Are they local credit unions? Are they there's more, than that. there's more than that. So we are actually plugged in right now with, with about 60 credit unions. Okay. Uh, we've got access to the entire credit union ecosystem. We've got partners uh, spread across the, the uh, United States that give us access directly to 3,500 credit unions. Mm -hmm. And so the idea that, you know, these non-for-profit financial tool sets yep. that you can jump in and out of or connect into and connect out of is now a reality that's here. Wow, that's great. And see, that also kind of bridges the gap of the states versus the federal. Right. And once again, you're using a friendly use case. I like to think of it as like a mom and pop pharmacies versus like going to the big, you know, big three, the, the big pharmacies, you know, that's where exactly you get more it friendly. Like it's literally a well, more it's focused. Right. So what do DAOs do? Right. DAOs are focused on these super concentrated um, uh, uh, ideologies, right? A group of people, whether that's 500, whether it's a thousand, they get together, they have this ideology. And now we can start to turn those DAOs. We can start to turn those these groups that need this financial access we can give them the opportunity to create a credit union around their their focus, their membership need mm -hmm. for financial access, and they can build their own their own lending tools, their own investment vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, they can they can build their own connectivity into other institutions, federally insured institutions, whether that be banks or other credit unions. How about institutional adoption from the GPLP community? 
So all of that is available. So um, businesses, you know, both businesses and uh, so B2C, B2B. So everything that you can imagine in a traditional financial network, call it a bank, call it a credit union, is, is available here, right? Um, we're initially launching with deposit services and some, and some you know, preliminary kind of uh, financial tools. Uh, that's, we just did that to create a model and get to market fast. But all of your traditional tools are available through these mechanisms, right? In a regulated fashion, which is the, the cooler that's part. The that's it's the KYC. Concept. You need to know your investor, you right? B, you need BSA, you need KYC, you need AML, mm -hmm. and all these have to be part of it. I know for... Yeah, I said this on a space yesterday. You know, a lot of Web3 companies and, and crypto companies think right now, well, I'm skirting the reg. No, you're not. You're regulated. You just haven't gotten the letter yet. You yeah. Know? yeah. You're not big enough to get the letter. So we have to we have to play in these regulated systems. We believe in self-sovereignty. We believe in self-custody. It matches almost identically with the for the people ethos of credit unions. And we believe this is the model, the regulated model moving forward in the United States for uh, financial inclusion banking the underbanked, getting digital assets to live alongside your fiat assets, investing tools to live alongside, but you know, whether they're uh, represented by a digital asset, a crypto asset, a traditional asset. I mean, I think we all agree, most of these things are gonna be represented by digital assets in the future. Oh, for oh, sure, and, yeah. and you've also got, you know, the, the rules are gonna change, but this is a great start to be able to actually like, you know, get a real use case for the everyday individuals or small b2b b2c company yeah and if we look at crypto right we look at kind of the, there there's this uh there's this you know just in the concept of bridging assets for example right there's this inclusive nature of hey you have a crypto community i have a crypto community we should be able to co-collaborate and create this larger idea right? right that's happening all day that doesn't exist with jpm coin that, you know, right. uh, that doesn't exist with custody uh, but maybe putting ourselves on the spot here but so we just had a, a conversation with uh, with Carla Reyes, who was like a SMU uh, attorney, works in this in this field, and I find it fascinating that she talks about like the the legis basically the legalese of what you guys are doing. Have you actually discussed any part of that with with her or her firm, or have you? Well, she's she's a professor of law there. Professor of law, right. but yeah. she's doing some stuff right. on the side, I'm sure. From, yeah, yeah, very academic. So, yeah. so those are you know, and that's a big part of it. Is yeah. like obviously you're in a very regulated area, and like having counsel that can help you through avoid some of these issues and some of these other companies that thought they were doing the right thing. So we do have yeah. counsel that the, you know, I think what we, what I found early on was that the credit union space was not well known just right. generally, right? right? You go ask most people, they, they don't really know what a credit union does. Right. It's a non for profit financial cooperative. It's, it's a bank that doesn't make money. Right. And so um, it returns it. That's why you can go and get investing, you know, whether it's a loan, whether it's access to a broker, typically at much, much lower rates. So your car loans a lot of times, your mm -hmm. home loans a lot of times, better served through a credit union. When we talk about the, the legal kind of understanding of the credit union space, we went out and we had to find experts in the credit union space because it's just not very well right. understood outside the space. Banking is very well understood, FDIC, Fed, you know, SEC mechanisms, Howie, all these are very well understood. The credit union side of things, though, wasn't. So we did engage. Of course, this is all, you know, we do have a, a proposed charter from the NCUA. So we've been working with the federal regulators directly to ensure that, you know, we're doing things absolutely as they need to be done by the book with council guiding. And yeah. So we're coming up on the end. Elevator pitch. Tell the general public what you guys do, John. Tell me, tell us what, like, specifically how they can find you to get more information and how they can get involved. Banksocial.io, that's our open banking platform. It's a self-custody, self-directed, digital trade-fi, uh, DeFi mashup app, okay? And then we have defy.coop, D-E-F-Y.coop. Go there, sign up, get in line to get access to the credit union to be one of the first members. Uh, TBC members have access to the credit union automatically through their TBC membership. Right, right. So if you're not a TBC member and you're at the event, become a TBC member because that's the way to get into the credit union. But through those two sites, you can get access to all and everything we talked about here today. That's awesome. Thanks so much, John. Appreciate it. Thanks so it. much, Frank. Yeah. Good for having you. Thank you. Great being on. Yeah. Thanks so much for uh, joining us for another episode of Money in the Bank with Frank live from uh, Summit 2023. We just had John Wingate on with us. And uh, obviously, I'll be the, my, my co-host extraordinaire, Dr. Bitcoin himself. Right, Mark. <laughs> so thanks so much for joining us and uh, look forward to another episode. And 
Stay with us. Hey, thanks for watching The Merge. We've got a ton more stuff for you to watch on YouTube, on Instagram, on TikTok, everywhere. Check us out.